right, everybody, we are back with part two of our discussion on Jurassic World Rebirth. Today, we're going to be discussing uh, some of those images that were uploaded uh, in promotion of this new film. And then we're going to talk about the characters. We kind of stopped our last recording at like, hey, here's all the, the character information and stuff like that. So and we'll, we'll discuss some of the plot, of course. But um, but yeah, we've got a lot to dive into again. Tom, how you doing? You're doing good the same day that I talked uh, to you last uh, time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's literally been minutes since yeah. we last nothing, both on a recording. Nothing new happened since the uh, last episode. Oh, uh, 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 so much, so much. <laughs> yeah. Wait, like yeah, the um, problem is, I, I don't know if you've seen, but we've got the first trailer. I know. The problem <laughs> Can you is imagine like, if there what, could be more we're information out there? <laughs> If there is more information, I will certainly update everybody in, in the, the time being. But um, but yeah, let's dive into these images that were uh, uploaded. Yeah. And man, it was like, like I, like I said, I was busy like getting stuff ready. I think, you know, I think yeah. Tim uh, in our chat had posted like the Instagram post or whatever for like the title. And then, like, I clicked on it. I was like, oh, my gosh, there's also pictures? Like, whoa, like, we've got a lot. And then also there's synopsis. Um, so this first uh, image I want to dive into is the first one that they uploaded. Um, we've got uh, and their, their, their synopsis or their whatever it's called, description thing, it just says a new era is born. So no real information in there. But we've got a lovely picture of uh, two of the main characters. And then the second photo. Yeah is Mahershala Ali. Uh, I'm going to go over to JurassicParkPodcast.com where I wrote up a little article. You can see it there, but I just oh, want to get yeah. versions of the pictures. Um, so this photo is up, uploaded first, and um, whew, my initial vibes, because I, I looked at this photo before any kind of synopsis yeah. or anything was read, and I'm like, man, this is giving me 90s vibes, dude. This is like, oh, yeah. we're, we're we're golden here. We're, we're in the 90s. Look at this. She's got like a bunch of really cool earrings. It's just giving me 90s vibes. There's like flannel, which is giving me <laughs> 90s vibes. I don't know. He's got some cool looking glasses, maybe giving me 90s vibes. I don't know. Uh, it just looks cool. And then I'm like, okay, it's set five years after Dominion. Okay, so it's not 90s vibes, but... Mm. They, I mean, it, they are vibes, but it's not strictly from the 90s. So um, I had to change my thought process a little bit there. But it does look very cool. I'm loving the style. Uh, yeah. I think I think they look cool. He's given me, Jonathan Bailey's character has given me, like, Billy Brennan vibes a little bit. And, oh, uh, he's given me like Lowry. An Alan Grant. A, oh, you're getting a Lowry? Okay, all right. Because yeah. of glasses? Am I giving you Lowry vibes right now? Um, yeah you are yeah <laughs> um but i like it i like the style uh she's got a backpack on she's got a scarf on i can't really see what kind of shirt yeah. she has but um well yeah she's got her hair up in the back in a ponytail i, I guess that's what you would call uh <laughs> but, this is the uh, kind of riveting description yes. i live for <laughs> well this is the thing like we we have to like dive deep into these photos like i zoomed in on like the clothes and stuff like what this to you see if there's you know man come on i'm i'm trying to see if there's any logos i'm like is there a tattoos is there anything dude he looking, looking for edge. oh my god look What's at that? the vein pop on his arm oh my god <laughs> Jeez. yeah um, but we got the earrings over here. Uh, very cool style. I'm digging it all. Very adventurous looking. Um, and before we knew anything about the characters, this is I'm just looking at this and I'm like, all right, this is giving me Lost World vibes uh, because they're in the long grass. That's definitely not a good idea, mm -hmm. depending on what island they're on. Um, we do see like some mountainous landscape in the background, it looks like. Um, and uh, actually, let's look. I want to take a quick look at his eyes is there anything oh. nothing anything reflecting wait, oh, wait is, zoom that, in, is that a brachiosaurus zoom in. is that a brachiosaurus i think that 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 looks like a brachiosaurus head like... to me no 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 that looks like paul kirby oh paul <laughs> he's still there he's like swinging on some scaffolding or something like that he's just no, honestly, like, I feel like I see, like, a crest of a Brachiosaurus and the mouth. It's got, like, that, you know, like, that happy Brachiosaurus mm. image that floats around from the Jurassic yeah. production? Um, I've just got, got one like thing that. to say to you. Go if ahead. it was a Brachiosaurus, it would look more crispy. Well. 
there were brachiosaurs <laughs> on different islands, my guy. Um, and like I've always said, I don't think that island's totally toast, but we'll see. Um, I hope they do like acknowledge that. You know, I, ho- I hope there mm. is acknowledgement in this movie. If this is not Nublar, I hope they at least say, uh, mm. and not in not in like a news announcement form. <laughs> you know, some other form, please. Not like a. <laughs> It's been five years since podcast. the destruction. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this to me looks like that kind of moment, though, where he could potentially mm-hmm. be seeing a brachiosaurus reflected in his eyes. I mean, his eye line, um, his eye line would be at the right level. He is looking up. They are kneeling down. Yeah. Um, and she, she's like a little bit more concerned, but it's it's definitely not a, a scared. Neither of them yeah. are giving me scared vibes. They are not looking at something scary. No, I know. Um, I think the dynamic makes sense, right? Because he's the paleontologist, so he's going to be excited, whereas she's obviously military, so she's going to be thinking about safety and the security ramifications. Um, mm -hmm. There is a big elephant in the room in this picture, which is the fact that they're still in long grass. Um, So (laughs) this, I believe this is from one of the sequences that's being filmed in Thailand, um and they had like placed a bunch of long grass for the filming but obviously long grass within our franchise has a very specific meaning uh you usually find particular animals use the long grass for hunting so it is you know an an interesting point of speculation as to whether we're going to see any velociraptors in the long grass again um or whether this is just setting that aesthetic yeah I mean, who knows why they're here, what they're doing in mm. this situation. But, like, I always love to think about the real world, um, like, yeah. information that's out there. If, if like, you know, the Lost World's been out there for mm. however many number of years, there's certainly been a book written. There's certainly been information written about the long grass and we do not need to go into the long grass because that's a bre- uh, you know a, a feeding ground for velociraptors mm. um so like th- yeah i'm wondering like why do they think this is a safe spot to be if this is not sorna i mm. you know we might not have anything to worry about if if there's no velociraptors here maybe well, who knows there's an interesting question as well, actually, and this this is the first time I've properly looked at this with an analytical mindset, which is that actually are those mountains in the top right hand corner? Because if they are, that gives us some good insight into the to- topography of the island. Um, and being mountainous would be, again, very in keeping with the islands that we already know from the franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just an interesting point as well. It's interesting. I mean, it looks like Zora is wearing a sleeveless shirt, which would make sense, possibly yeah. a sleeveless vest. Um, like you say, she's got the scarf. The thing I find interesting, although it could be in her other ear, is the fact that there's the um, obviously piercings. But when I initially looked at it, before I realised it was piercings, I wondered if it was an earpiece. Because the thing that strikes me almost immediately is this doesn't give off the vibe of kind of special forces, which they say her background was. But in the synopsis, it says very specifically that she's been contracted. So I wonder if her, um, Mahershala, and the rest of the characters in this are actually PMCs, private military contractors, which would make a lot more sense because then we're seeing something like in Jurassic Park 3 where it's people who have been hired to go on this mission and maybe Henry is the person who's been sent by the farmer group and they've hired the PMCs to protect him or something similar. Well, yeah, that does make me think a lot about Kong Skull Island, right? Is that the name of that movie? Yeah. Movie um, where it's like, you know, we've got Brie Larson, we've got um, Tom Hiddleston in very like kind of, they look, I feel like they're very similar to like what we see here. Um, and they yeah. also had a military outfit along with them. He was the tracker guy who was like very good at like doing stuff like that. And she was the photographer. Um, so maybe re- role, re- roles are kind of reversed here in a way, but, um, but yeah, I, I definitely see the vibe as like something like that. Um, and, and yeah, I, I bet she's got, which we'll talk about. Maybe we'll talk about, um, mm. 
Oh, we actually, I think we did. I don't know. Well, but anyway. Um... So I, I tell you something that's quite interesting, which is if, so the, the phrase top secret is used to describe mm. the mission, right? And if they're PMCs, then they're not operating on behalf of the government. So where are they going that needs to be top secret? In this universe, we know that obviously Sauna was restricted. Presumably Nublar's restricted after the events of Fallen Kingdom. Is it possible that the government have already found out about this third island and this new island is restricted as well? That's what I, I find interesting because the idea of it being top secret suggests that whatever they're doing would be ethically frowned upon by a government entity. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I would assume they'd all be restricted at this point. Also, the fact that... I've come up leave. with way more discussion than I thought I'd have for this picture. Yeah. I'm quite <laughs> proud of myself. Oh, you can't be surprised. Um, <laughs> the fact that they're racing to secure DNA also is very yes. interesting to me. Like, who, what are they racing against? Is this like another film yeah. where like there's a second team? Oh, why would, why would Hammond send two teams? You know, like, is there another <laughs> team out there that they're racing against? Is there the government that they're racing against? Is yeah. there like some order to kill off the dinosaurs and they're racing against doing something like yeah. that? Like, uh, so I, I don't know why they're racing. And is there a time only like a certain time period where this is possible. Like, like if they don't get the DNA now, is there a chance to get it later? Or is there no chance mm. to get it later? Like, so I'm, I'm really interested to see, like, I, I would love it if there was the whole, like we're bombing the islands, you know, like, yeah, you know, like we've heard before. And, and there's actually uh, a volcano on Island number three that's about to erupt. <laughs> I no, honestly, like, if 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 they did find out that there was which thirty something years later, how could they just find mm -hmm. out? I don't know. Um, but um, but if they just found out that there's like a, you know a third island with uh, reject dinosaurs out there or something like, I could definitely see the government being like, we need to take care of this right now, you know, and this needs to I bomb, hate. and then this life-saving miraculous you know big pharma guys like mm -hmm. you need to get out there now they're the top the clock is ticking you need to do this before and then it's like I, a whole race you know like i could see that being a, mm -hmm. a possible plot i hate my brain so much because sometimes <laughs> I know, it, just, I know. It, it thinks of things and then i'm like why have you done this so my immediate thought is if this third island exists right i like say it's an indian island even if it's a secret island, it would have been on the book somewhere. So when Ludlow yeah. took over, wouldn't he have gone there? Why would he go to yeah. Sauna if this other place exists? Well, I mean, because they're not presentable to the public, you know? Mm, yeah. There, there, was a, there was a sinister secret to keep these things undercover. Um, but, yeah. like, you know, if the government's getting involved after Jurassic Park, after Lost World... Like, there's no way they don't, like, just say, like, oh, you guys, like, have a bunch of islands. Maybe we should check those other ones out. Or would they be yeah. like, ah, we don't have enough people to check out those other islands. Um, it's a so, resource yeah. issue. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But um, but anyway, the photo, that's about it from the photo. I, I like what I'm seeing here. It's a good vibe. Um, and we do have a second yeah. photo, which, interestingly, like I, I, I'm surprised they they didn't re did not release like a dinosaur photo at all. Like so, no, yeah, no dinosaurs. So this one is interesting because I think it's quite clear it's on a dock, which I haven't seen a lot of people say. But if you look around the base, you can see the lights that would be on the dock, which means yeah. that when it says it's like a tie down um, right uh, there, you can see yeah, and and rope, so and where... stuff like that. Yeah, where it says on the sign behind Mahershala, um, a weight rescue craft here, that's presumably mm -hmm. a rescue boat, right? Now, there is the elephant in the room, which is that bottom right-hand corner in-gen logo, so we know that this mm -hmm. is an in-gen island. So um, stupid, by the way, that we can just zoom in on a blurry photo and be like, yeah, that's the in-gen logo. Yeah. And we all know it instantaneously, Dude, like so dumb. That this was, I literally <laughs> retweeted their official, so this was one of the tweets that blew up. I retweeted their official post with the two pictures and was just like, does that logo say in gen with like a zoomed in screenshot? And yeah. I guarantee you the social media person would have been like, why the hell is this 
absolute annoying notice this <laughs> like why <laughs> um yeah. but yeah so that that kind of says to us that it's an ingen island clearly mahershala is squaring off against a dinosaur or something because he's got the flare in hand interestingly his uniform's looking a lot more traditionally militaristic so he's got camouflage cargoes but the thing that's a really interesting detail is in his belt he has a vial of something as you've zoomed in on which yeah. i think suggests that he's gone off without zora so i reckon that zora goes off to rescue these people and he goes no i'm gonna get what we came here for that vial like suspiciously looks like the one from temple of doom too like yeah it looks like the one that like would save indy from from dying he's, yeah he's got a canteen uh seemingly like a knife pouch and uh like a small there, so utility there's something really thing. interesting here actually which is that although although we have confirmation that we're five years in the future again none of the equipment none of the uniform that he's wearing looks particularly modern those pouches don't look like modern molly systems, which are what the military use. They look relatively traditional, like old school leather pouches and things. So I, I find it interesting that although we're, we're in a modern era, the costume design um, and some of the other aesthetic choices that are out there on the internet do paint a very traditional idea which I, I just find, I find it quite interesting. I feel like they're, they're trying to essentially lean into the visual language of the original films while still moving the films forward. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Like you think about like uh, the movies and the TV shows, like the, the technology that they've got on, on their person at all times. Mm. It's like, you know, there's some crazy stuff that they are utilizing on these islands. And uh, well, I mean, I mean, contrast this, right? Contrast this to Jurassic World, where you have the in-gen mercenaries deployed. They yeah. are fast special forces helmets. They've got Kevlar vests. They have literally got an MRAP. They've got a Humvee. They have like the most cutting edge technology. And these guys don't really look like that. Like they, if I was just looking at Mahershala, I wouldn't think PMC. The first thing I would think would be Pyra, which I find quite interesting. He's got like a beret on of some sort. Yeah. And um, yeah. And a very like, like toned down military style. It, yeah. Like for instance, it really does remind me of the, the Kong, you know, outfits, you know, like the very, yeah, like I can totally 1970s see that. or something like that. It's, it's just like a, 1980s like vibe it's it's just something like timeless and and i appreciate that because i think sometimes like the technology this franchise has gotten into with the holograms and all that stuff is mm. like it's a little bit out there sometimes so i'm I'm okay with him just being like which i i think is fine if it is um you know a some sort of other outfit like you've been saying you've been putting out all kinds of letters i don't even know what you're saying um he, <laughs> a, a, a what would you say npcs he's an npc <laughs> pmc private PMC. military contractor <laughs> okay yeah. um yeah but uh, uh I, I don't know but i don't know that he's to me this is like i'm track i'm trying to get that craft to get over here whether it's like um yeah, a, like a landing area for like um well you yeah, think he's a, a, screaming at the craft <laughs> yeah dude i think he's like hey hey you know, get down here hurry up come on like and i could definitely I, see I'm a gonna dinosaur tell you, coming and chomping him on the side yeah you know, when that happens i'm gonna tell you exactly what is happening here he's not screaming at a boat he's screaming because the aquatic animal that attacked the family boat has just come out of the water hmm because think about some of Gareth Edwards shots with like Godzilla in the water coming out of it. Yeah, I mean that that would be that would be awesome. I, I'd love you know some marauding dinos attacking. It's actually right the USS Argo from the creator. He's just noticed it in orbit, and he's <laughs> like, "Oh no, we're about to get bombed." The big beam floating down. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. To me, he's looking up. I'm thinking like a seaplane of some sort or something mm. like that, that that could potentially land here and oh, we're you know, going rescue him. Peter Jackson, Kong Skull Island video game vibes now. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> Never played it. Um, 
but I do like what I see here. I, I love I love the flair. Obviously, mm. it's very very Jurassic. Um, but yeah, not not much else going on here. I hope. Uh, I just have a feeling that he's about to get eaten, but not by what he's yeah. looking at. I think I think he knows something's behind it, him, and he's like, "You need to land now. Get down here, or whatever it is." So, um, <laughs> but yeah, that's the vibes I'm getting from this. I like the look of like the flare. Yeah. It's like nice 4K. Image this that they is uploaded. this is a completely random um, thought, but just because we're seeing something on a dock, do you know? I don't think we'll see it in this film, but do you know what I would have absolutely loved to have seen that I think would have been so awesome? Would be a Sarko Sukus. Oh yeah, that would be awesome. I had to think about what that was for a second. <laughs> I'm like, I, I could like see the cogs worry. <laughs> I was like running through toys in my head. I'm like, I know it's a toy. I know yeah. it's oh yes, yes. Uh, I think I got some right around here, but uh, I I love that thing. I think that would be really awesome. It would yeah. not be up there though. It would not be that would no. be weird if it was just flying through the air at him. It's cool. getting air dropped <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> we could we could air drop these things in, and they would eat the enemy belt buckle and all. Uh, yeah, but um, but those are the two images. Wait, was that Herschel meant to be Hoskins? Pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was like a Owen Hoskins. Kind I, I of mean, it, I was there. gonna say it was pretty much just Owen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, but uh, but yeah, I love Mahershala. He's he's a great actor, and um, yeah, I do think you're right. He definitely is giving me vibes of like I could backstab the crew, or not necessarily backstab, but finish the mission, mm. kind of. You know, uh, with yeah. this vial, whatever is here, he's definitely, he's definitely carrying something that he shouldn't be carrying because that is not a proper way to carry anything. <laughs> Just tucking <laughs> it into your belt like that. So, um, but yeah, I think I think he definitely is going to be. Uh, which I think, if you watched his recent movie, which I'm, uh, it's what was the name of that one that came out on Netflix? Something about the end of the world or something. Um, Oh. Don't look at me. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, leave, leave the world behind. I think that was it. Um, okay. Yeah, leave the world behind. It was a very like, kind of like mysterious movie about you know stuff happening in the world, like whether it was like a virus mm. or is the, the apocalypse or whatever it is. He was a very very mysterious character. Played it so well, and um, I could definitely see him being like this, like. This guy that we find comfort in for sure, but like we're not totally sure if we could trust him. So it's hopefully got something that cooking under the surface for sure. Yeah. Uh, but let's go back to the synopsis here for a minute because uh, we did stop previously um, after the shocking discovery uh, that's been hidden for decades. We have like one last mm -hmm. real, or there's like two, I guess. Um, but they mentioned that Mahershal Ali, actually, let me get this more on the screen for everybody. Uh, Mahershal Ali is uh, Duncan Kincaid, Zora's yeah. most trusted team leader. Emmy nominee and Jen, I... Olivier, I, which by the way, I said, I, I when I was doing my episode, I've read this just straight up, like real quick. And I'm like, what are is an like Olivier? Emily nominee and an Oliver Award? Who are I was like, playing? Olivier. I'm like, I don't know what that word is. Award winner. And then a, a, a good friend of mine, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, but he uh, he let me know that um, it was Olivier, uh, which I, I'd yeah. heard of that before, of course, but I didn't know that's what that was presenting to me. Um so he's uh an <laughs> Olivier award winner, Jonathan Bailey from I just have Bridgerton. this image in my head of you being like, who the hell is Olivier Award and why have we not heard that they've been casted at this point? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't think it was a person. Uh I just didn't know what the kind of award it was. Um so he's from Wicked and Bridgerton. He plays paleontologist. Oh my god, Obi Wan Kenobi's been cast. Yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi is here. Um, <laughs> Emmy, who's Emmy? Oh, that, that's my daughter. Uh, she's <laughs> she's playing Rupert Friend. Uh, no. uh, he's an Emmy no a nominee. Rupert Friend from Homeland and Obi Wan uh, appears as Big Farmer representative Martin Krebs. Uh, and Manuel, Manuel Garcia Rolfo from The Lincoln Lawyer and Murder on the Orient Express plays Ruben Delgado, the father of the shipwrecked family. Um, the cast also includes Luna Blaze uh, from Manifest, David Iacono from The Summer I Turned Pretty, and Audrina Miranda from Lopez vs. Lopez. Uh, they are the Ruben 
or Ruben's family, I guess. Um, yeah. The film also features members of Zora and Krebs' crew. So that, that at this that's point, like, that's they should hint. just say. So it confirms that Krebs has commissioned them, but also yeah. it should just say the characters that will die in this film are. <laughs> Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and this is another name that I had a, a few names that I had a hard time with. Uh, Philippine Vel Velge G Velg. I don't know. Station Eleven. Um, if it's the person I'm I'm thinking of, I didn't know the name, but uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, Betcher Silv Sylvan from BMF Sylvain, and Ed yeah. Sylvain uh, and Ed Screen yeah. Screen sc sc from Deadpool. Scry Scry Screen Screen. Scrine <laughs> from Deadpool. And I've seen Deadpool. I don't even know who that is, but uh, I don't know who these people are. I, I'll have to, they, they, are they, were they from the, um, that, that stuff that came out like a while ago? I don't know. Uh, that oh, we weren't no, sure they if were, it was true. This is, this is hilarious. So if you want any more evidence that there's going to be some, some dodgy people, um, working with Zora, Ed Skrine is the person who played Ajax in Deadpool, so the main villain of the first film. Ajax <laughs> in Deadpool? The, the bald guy. Don't, the who? Oh, God. Dude, I, I do um, not remember. <laughs> the thing, I, I, the thing I find funniest, the thing I find funniest, right, is the oh, fact okay. that All right. Rupert Friend or Rupert Friend is playing um, the big farmer guy because I'm not going to be able to watch him without thinking of Agent Forty Seven. Was he in that movie? He played Hitman. Yeah. Oh, I, I had no idea. Um, what was the other one? The other there was. Uh, oh, Betcher Sylvain. Um, this was the guy that was just recently revealed yeah. uh, before this. Okay. Um, yeah, and the Ed guy, okay, I remember him. Uh, oh, he's from the Transporter from 2015. Oh, 2015, never mind. Um, but the other person, the the Philippine, uh, Velge, Velge yeah. uh, you know what's funny is she's um, from Station just 11. Just with that aesthetic, mm, with w the, do you know the thing that comes to me immediately when I see her? Computer hacker. Okay. I don't know why, but I just think computer hacker. You know, she's from Station Eleven, and the cast photo, like their cast release that came from that one, like French website or whatever that everybody was running, none of those people have really showed up anywhere. Um, and there was somebody it's from Station all dead Eleven at this point in the film. <laughs> there was somebody from Station Eleven on that that um, list, but not this person. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to figure that out for myself real quick, but, um, let's go back to the, the cast of characters, um, Duncan Kincaid, Zora's most trusted team leader. So they can, been... can we just appreciate, I hear the surname Kincaid and all I have in my mind when I think of Kincaid is the caretaker of the Bond estate from No Time to Die or not No Time to Die, Skyfall. <laughs> Don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but is, that's, I'm glad is, you have that is, memory. Yeah. Wow. I'm glad you have that memory. So, so far, we're, uh, we're free for free on missed references. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, one of these times, I'm going to give you a... I know that reference. <laughs> um, but uh, Zor is the most trusted team leader. So he is somebody that mm. she has trusted probably for a long time. Somebody she continually goes after. Mm. That's definitely the kind of character that would... Would it just sets somebody. him up for betrayal. Yeah, yeah it, absolutely. Like, how could you do this? Like, we've been doing this together, and he's like, "It's just a job, you know that." Or something. You know, I could yeah. definitely see that some kind of situation. D don't quit um, the day job, Brad. <laughs> what do you What do you mean? I do voices for a living. <laughs> Is that what they're called? <laughs> they, yeah, I hear I hear voices constantly coming out of my mouth. Um, but uh, we also have Jonathan Bailey playing a paleontologist. So if that was no surprise, Tom's out of the picture here. Um, but uh, from that image we talked about before, he is um, a paleontologist, Dr. Henry Loomis. I feel like you mentioned like 
Duncan Kincaid reminds you of something like Henry Loomis, Dr. Loomis. I'm thinking of yeah. like uh, Michael Myers here. He's, um, Oh, I don't know what you were thinking of, but he's Samuel Loomis is like the doctor for Michael Myers. <laughs> so Dr. Loomis I, I, is, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why, but I hear Dr. Loomis and I think of Dr. Zeus. <laughs> He's he's gonna spin a nice rhyme throughout this movie for sure, uh, <laughs> but very familiar sounding names and stuff. Even uh, big pharma representative Martin Krebs, um, you know that's a very just like ugh, Martin Krebs. Yes. Um, uh, there's also you know Krebs. there's a obvious reference to the um, the guy a big pharma guy. Martin Shre Shre oh, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I feel like I feel like it's a very obvious on the nose reference to that guy. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I expect it, you know, to be very similar in nature, where he's a very untrustworthy kind it of. It gets revealed that he's yeah, he's trying to sell it for like ten times its market value by the end of the film. Yeah, yeah. Um, I so I. I I don't think he's going to play it like, like I mentioned Eli Mills or whatever other name mm. I called him. Um, Cause Eli <laughs> was like a guy, like you side with that guy. He's a nice guy. Like he felt good. But then by the end, he's like, eh, what do you want me to do? Huh? Let's put a pillow on your face. Um, so I don't see that this guy being like that. Why like, does your impression him. of Eli Mills sound like Watto? Uh, I put the pillow on your face, huh? You know, just like that. Is that a good one? I can do Watto. You want me to quit my day job now, huh? What do you think? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and uh, Manuel Garcia Rolfo uh, is playing uh, Ruben Delgado. So, father of a shipwrecked family. And uh, we, we got the family there before I mentioned. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and I don't. There's no other information to go off of with the family. I'm sure they're just vacationing a little too close to the islands or something. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, I feel they're like uh, they've given us a lot of information. Friends. I've got some context for you. They're best friends with Paul and Amanda Kirby. Paul and Amanda Kirby at this point in time love their sailing vacations. So they would <laughs> like, like, you should go sailing near some islands. Nothing bad has ever happened to us near any islands. You'll be absolutely fine. And then what happens? It all goes to chaos. Dude, I, I hope like their boat is like named like the Enid or something like that. You know, like some <laughs> sort of reference to the Kirby family. Um, <laughs> no, no, uh, okay, it would just be called the Hammond. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there there could potentially be um, like a a tie to something with that family just because they are... I don't, I, it's so hard to be in the wrong place at the wrong time next to these islands. Mm. You know, like, how do you, how do you mess up that badly? Like by being near these islands, I don't know that that's possible. There's a chance that maybe they were just doing what the, what, um, what's his name? Uh, Eric and, uh, uh, Ben yeah. were doing, you know, the sightseeing kind of like excursion where they're getting too close. Yeah. The kids wanted to see it, or maybe that maybe the dad's about to die and he wants to get, he wants to see a dinosaur before he dies or something. You know, I, I could see something like that where like there, there's, there is a reason for them to be there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to play like, you know, a, they have a secret to hide or anything. So, um, oh, well, they, <laughs> well, who knows? Um, any anything else that you're gathering from this? Um, we we, well, we should uh, cover Zora again too because I mean yeah. she plays covert operations expert, skilled covert operations expert. So, um, and she leads a team of skilled people as well. Um, so it's giving it's giving Owen Grady vibes, right? Like it's just skilled mm -hmm. in in a certain area of expertise um so hopefully you know it's got it distanced itself from black widow and and that just generic military person hopefully they um they find a way to kind of bring that character to life in in a way that's interesting and useful um not, you know i i had no problem with owen i think i i do think though that it was 
semi one dimensional, and we have to really dig into his history to kind of understand mm. some of the stuff. But Owen um, was very much just an action hero. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. But hopefully, you know, she can definitely bring a lot of good stuff. I think acting wise to this character and believability. I think so. Yeah. So I think I, the I'm thing definitely I'm, looking I'm forward really... to. Her. I'm really excited about the fact that Scarlett is so excited about the film. Like, just seeing her talking about it and seeing how passionate she is about it is really, really encouraging. Um, I mean, for me, I I was excited for Scarlett when it started because she was, like, teenage Tom's crush. But the fact that she is just so excited about the source material as well is incredible because I don't think you, you get actors that often who are so invested in the source material. Yeah, yeah, she definitely feels way more invested than a lot of people. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes that hype train can just be like, "Oh, this is so exciting! It's the best thing ever! We love this movie! It's so it's so fun!" But to have like a little bit of history, yeah. and they've been leaning into that, I think, between um, you know her stuff that she's been doing in in different appearances, even John Bailey. Whoa, whoa, what? On on the subject of her different appearances, something has just twigged in <laughs> okay. my head. What? So we made a meme about it at the time, okay? But what if Water Finds a Way was actually a tease? There's because no biggest way. animals, There's no way. <laughs> one of the animals is a water animal. I just you actually think... think it might have been a tease. You think she was like talking behind? backstage with savannah guthrie like oh my god this is a big there's a huge water sequence in this movie and that's why she stumbled and she said water finds a way right that, that's what you guys say uh, right 100 percent, yes yeah i don't know dude that would be Mate, it's, it's practically so cringy confirmed. that would be so cringy <laughs> if that's on the poster dude if the if they thought that was like right, an, ima- a fun imagine twist. if that's like an actual sentence a character says out loud please no Please no. I mean, they're they're filming post that interview, so it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. <laughs> and in that world, they've heard that for some reason they've heard that a lot, uh, which has always yeah. been funny to me. That like a line that a guy said, like just in one meeting with a, a, a few scientists, just became like a a staple of it that universe. Or like yeah, like John Hammond's like, like you, you can I really imagine, like that right? he said okay. that. <laughs> so Henry Loomis, his biggest inspiration is Ian Malcolm. Him and Zora have just got the DNA sample from the Mosasaurus. They're just lying there, like catching their breath, and he's like, "Water finds a way." <laughs> do you think? Do you think? Uh, what's his name? Malcolm would be his his biggest, or he would be the biggest Malcolm fan. I. So do we think like he's is actually there any one of Malcolm's kids? Do you think like he was he was taught by like Dr. Grant or something like that? Do you think there's going to be any any I doubt it. Like I f- yeah, I, I feel... doubt it too. I just I mm. I can't, I can't help but have like that tie that there is a paleontologist in this movie and not bring up Dr. Alan Grant. That just seems kind of crazy to me. Um I tell like you I said, what would be quite a cool what what would be quite a cool reference is if they managed to make it so he was in the hall for the speech in jp3 that would be quite mm. cool that would be cool yeah that, that would that would be fun i I, mm. I wish there was some tie some sort of you know i read your book and uh you know he <laughs> oh, just God. became this guy it's like I, like i could definitely see him being like um i can't i can't believe i'm here like i i studied yeah. this dr alan grant was my source of inspiration like oh my god like yeah. I, I can't believe i'm physically on this island and she's like snap out of it get back in yeah. the game here i need you um so i could she's he's like, like saying that. that and she's like well i i i always like to think of myself as a future ex mrs malcolm <laughs> <laughs> yeah because they would know that line in this universe too um, <laughs> yeah but i think uh you know we're winding down here but um talking about these i think these we've we've done a good job talking about two pictures a two pictures <laughs> and some characters yeah. but um do you think uh you know we got a in-gen logo do you think there will be any other ties mm. any other official like mentions of anything do you get anything from the synopsis Why? that would think that there would be like a biosyn mention do you think that this yeah. big pharma guy like 
is it is it possible that it is bi- biosyn or do you think like no. there's any ties like that i think biosyn's reformed at this point so i think if anything they be- the, like you might get a reference to ramsey cole helping to contain the last of the dinosaurs or something similar but i think the the biggest reference is going to come in this in gen island because i i reckon we'll find out that hammond knew about the island I think there'll be some kind of logs or something or they discover paperwork that references John Hammond. And I think that will be the biggest callback we get. I I don't necessarily even know if they'll reference Henry Wu. Like they could go as far as saying this is this was their attempt at making dinosaurs before Wu came on board or something similar. Mm. Yeah, Um, that's possible. (laughs) Just like there's there's a Lockwood, there was a guy before Wu too. Yeah. Well, I didn't think of that actually, but presumably Lockwood would know about this island as well. So yeah, I could definitely see him. Yeah. You know, because one thing I wanted to touch on real quick was like, um, because of because of this sinister, shocking discovery, it, it could mm. potentially tarnish the history of Jurassic Park. Now we all know that Jurassic Park yeah. has a very bad history that people died, and you know, even the Jurassic World people died. It was a bad time in our our histories as uh if you're in that world um but do you think that there's a way that this movie tarnishes the legacy of john hammond and and the original park in any way um by hiding a secret that like Mm. john hammond knew about or something do you think it's possible that we see some kind of retroactive like you know because yeah a lot of people you know a lot of people complained but we we recently had the acolyte and um i love the show personally but like some people didn't like the fact that they continually paint the the Jedi as this like this just bad establishment that like, you know, we all yeah. in the eighties and nineties, we all had this great thought of the Jedi as if they were like this great group of people, but then the prequels started to shine a light on like maybe it wasn't the best so see, organization and you know, yeah. stuff like that. I I think your reference to the Acolyte is a really good one because the issue there is not that the Jedi aren't a good organisation, it's that it's repetitive. So you're continuously saying, oh, actually, they didn't know about this. Oh, actually, they didn't know about that. Oh, actually, this happened and they were involved in it. And it kind of, it chips away the image of those those characters like you you can have them be imperfect and i think that makes sense but it's to what level you do that and how much do you erode what people first knew about that character so i think it's the same for john hammond really i think they could do a small reference with it but i think it would have to be very nuanced because i think if you go go too heavily into the oh hammond knew about this all along and blah 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 then i don't think people are going to like that because you do exactly what Mm -hmm. fallen kingdom did which is add far too much juxtaposition so it begins to feel inconsistent with what we know beforehand. So it's a really fine balancing act to do it in a way that feels coherent, I think. Yeah, and I think uh, if you were to tarnish anything, you could you could go ahead and tarnish uh, Lockwood. You know, he's already been tarnished yeah. quite a bit. You know, like we initially thought that he was doing some secret, you know, cloning yeah. things. And so we tarnished his name that way, but he was just like a kind old gentleman that like, didn't want his daughter. Well, how, how <laughs> cool would that be? If this, this uh, see, this is why I hate, I hate when stories wreck on things because the wreck on with, um, dominion obviously means that he never actually experimented. with trying to clone, clone Charlotte mm-hmm. because, Maisie was just Charlotte's kid. But can you imagine if he had experimented with cloning her and this island was the facility where those experiments had happened? Like, yeah. Um, it's, it's just what it could have been, man. But yeah. this, and we, you, this, you, this you is joked... the thing I would say. Go on. Oh, I was going to say, you joked about it earlier about the human hybrid of it all. Like, I, you know, there's certainly the potential to go down that route in some way. Yeah. I hope not. Still, I hope not. But. I do think that 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 idea was so ever present on their mind that uh, there's still the potential for that to happen. Yes. Yeah. 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 I just yeah. Don't whatever it is. Don't lean into the retcons too much. Actually, just commit to an idea and see it through because that's why good storytelling happens. Like, can you imagine if Marvel had course corrected after four or after Captain America, we would have never got one of the the greatest up until Endgame one of the greatest cinematic universes that has been created. So yeah. just just commit, don't course correct. 
Well, my dog's barking constantly, so let's uh, go ahead and wrap it up here. <laughs> uh, thank yeah. you for joining me on this two-part journey of uh, a little press release and some images and stuff like that. So, uh, Tom, yeah. where, what are you working on? What can where can people find you? What, what are you yeah. doing, man? What's going on? So. People can find me at Tom underscore Jurassic on Twitter and Instagram. I don't mention it often, but I'm going to have some new videos coming out on Jurassic Collectible soon as well. I have a another parcel coming from Tim that I'm very excited for. Um, and also Tales from a Jurassic World on YouTube. We have just finished season two, so you can listen on YouTube or you can listen on the podcast feed. Um, and we are doing an open casting call for season three which ends, I think, September the 22nd. Um, so please submit your uh, auditions to be a part of the final season of Tales from a Jurassic World, where we will wrap up Morrison and Brown's story. And I have teased it before, but there is potentially going to be a, a new series in the future called um, whatever the title of the story is, and then A Tale from a Jurassic World. But for now, this will be the final season of this core arc so all of these characters that you've got to know over the past couple of seasons uh, this is the end of their story Sad my hair has just got increasingly more chaotic as we've got i i wasn't gonna point it out my, my guy my one friend but uh, uh, yeah <laughs> i forgot to introduce you as a visualist or whatever dynamic visualist Tom. <laughs> yeah uh, but I'll just but, take uh, visionary. It's fine. <laughs> visionary. Thank you so much for joining me. And we'll, we'll be talking a lot soon. And we've got more Monarch stuff on the horizon and Godzilla stuff and, uh, chaos fairy uh, season chaos two. theories coming around. Yeah. We'll be talking a lot soon. So thank you so much for joining me and, uh, see you later.